everyone. Uh, just wanted to jump in real quick before we get started and say a quick thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. Uh, thank you for supporting this class. And um, I look forward to creating new videos and new content with your support. So thank you very much. Um, your name should be appearing in this general area right now. Thanks. Yeah. OK. Um, I should have recorded that rant. <laughs> People might really enjoy that. Anyway. OK, so we got like some number of these, 10. I think we could probably do them. Uh, but if we can't, we'll come back next week, too. It's, you know, either way is fine with me. But um, so I have Rasmus, Aurelio, Christian, and Randy. But I will not choose you in that order, or you'll be able to predict when your turn is going to come. And that's no fun. So I'm going to choose Christian. <laughs> Joke's on you. I'm never prepared anyway. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ene and Toten and Shere and Abraham Neret and Ah Neret and Neret and Neret and Neret and Abraham. All right. Oh boy. Uh, so yep. there you go. I'm, I stick to my word. I was not prepared. A uh, little preparation might have helped. Although I do love it when people come unprepared. I'm so like, I, I sincerely hope I have created a classroom environment where you feel like you can just show up and like not get in trouble for it. Uh, Cause I, I hate that. I hate getting in trouble for not being prepared. It's like, I'm here and I'm wearing clothes, right? <laughs> like that counts for something, surely. Well, that's exactly the position I'm in right now. So <laughs> no, yeah. Ene, that first Ene, is that um, is that like the question one or is that the pet? Okay. Ene. It is the question one. It's the it's the focalizer that, uh, but in this case, it it creates a conditional statement. Um, so I think like let's let's get through all the rest of it and then put that Ene back and see if it makes sense. So if it's in toten in shere in Abraham. Uh, in toten is y'all. Um, mm -hmm. the kids in Abraham of Abraham. Yeah. So y'all are the kids of Abraham, and then just like you know, put a pin in that, mm -hmm. and then let's do let's do this part as though it were a separate sentence. Nere tena in Abraham. So something about uh, going to do the, the the tasks of Abraham. Yeah, you do the 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 works of Abraham, and then this is the imperfect converter. Nere. Okay. So, is it the tin is us, the first person singular? Is it? I think it's y'all. Nere ten na. Yeah. Oh, would 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 we then be neren neren na? Ah, I think so. I mean, this is like a politan, so I I don't like have all the forms sort of in there. But um, I mean. It's clear to me that this is the imperfect converter because it really couldn't be anything else and it fits this construction. Uh, but it would probably be something like netin in Saidic, or if it were first person, it would be nen. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I'm thinking this is gonna mean something like, if y'all are the, the sons of Abraham, y'all would have done the deeds of Abraham. Or Close. Like um, it's a it's a less vivid, so it's like, um, were you the sons of Abraham, you would be about to do the deeds of Abraham. Oh, okay. So it's the so the the ene and then this imperfect converter actually um, just makes it um, an irrealis. It makes it like um, not yeah. a real thing. It's a, it's like a hypothetical conditional. Um, like a, yeah. Like a so yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it, if not, if uh, you were the sons of Abraham, you would do the deeds of Abraham. Yeah. Okay. A question concerning the passing of the uh, the second to last word, uh, the tinna is that the second plural and then the future marker. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and then those ends get squished together into one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Nere definitely threw me off because he. I mean, Alan says in, in chapter eight. The past converter for achmimik, fayumik, mesokimik, nateten, 
Bohairik Nareten and Lycopolitan uh, Neteten. So, hmm, according to, mm. to his table, it should be Neteten, not Nereten. I remember we said in one class that those like to be interchangeable just because area yeah. appears so much. So I guess that's what it is, but it did throw me off for sure. And the, well, the, the pre-nominal form is Nere. Nere, and yes. then And then Neteten is the, the form that makes most sense if you're kind of following from the rules, but then, uh, and then Nereten is the form that makes slightly less sense. But then you have this, um, like the probabilistic nature of language where Nere is literally the thing you see most often. So it kind of, pushes things, um, you know, in the mind of the speaker, it, it might easily shift that uh, mm. from from like the rule based construction where you get one thing to the more, more frequent um, form where you get a slightly different thing. They also sound so similar that it's not at all surprising that they would um, exchange with one another. Mm. I'm trying to think of examples from English. I know we have them. Um, I mean, you, you see this quite often. Should have, should of, <laughs> should have, <laughs> yes, should have, <laughs> should, have. should have instead of should have, yeah, mm. should have. Uh, I think it's fine. I mean, whatever. <laughs> you can't <it's> just. <laughs> We're convinced that's what it is. It's just a, a past tense converter in front of a future. Oh, I'm, I'm entirely mm. convinced. Yeah, because that's the, the because the construction tells us that, mm -hmm. not just the form. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, the form is close, but it's like, yeah, you're fudging it a little bit. But then the, once you have the construction that needs a certain form, it's like, well, I mean, they didn't invent some new prefix just for this one sentence. So yeah, the I think that has to be it. The, the first, the in at the very beginning, mm. uh, that's not the, like the, like the um, circumstantial plus like the past converter, is it? It's not, uh, you mean like etymologically? Yeah, or like in there, because you, you can have in there, but then you I'm could. Just... That's or... a different thing, though. They just they coincidentally look similar. This is like I think it's related to the in that you see in like intolf, the independent pronoun. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you see it even in Middle Egyptian. You'll see in before a sentence, and it can make it a question, or it can like uh, front some like a noun for special uh, emphasis or something. Uh, but it's really a focalizer, and then. Focalizers can express conditions by just calling attention to that to the process. Like, be it true that such and such, then this would happen. Um, so yeah, it, it does both. It is also the question particle for the same reason. Okay, good question. Particle. Um, Rasmus. Yeah, I can give it a try. So okay. it um so if uh, if you if you singular mm -hmm. are the son of god throw yourself down yeah to the ground um Yours is the voice of Satan. Yeah. Christmas. And just, just that one time, though, not yeah. in general. Especially today. Especially <laughs> today. Oh, man. It's well, one like, of those kind of days. Voice of Satan. No, i kidding. <laughs> Don't even start with that shit. <laughs> what's, what's special about today? Am I missing something? I, I've, I've been having a cold for the last couple of oh, 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 I see. My voice is uh, really fucked. Uh, and now I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A satanic <laughs> cold. Yeah. Yeah, one of those. Uh, <laughs> language, no, excuse me. <laughs> um, Aurelio. Okay, oops, all right. Let me put my drink here down. Um, SJ in Tafen Kotek, Fnaton. Fnaton, he will rise. So mm -hmm. if he has lain, if he did lie down, he will rise. I'm a bit um, confused by the Intaf. So the entof is second past. Second perfect, yeah, second past. Second perfect, and it goes with SJ. So if, if he did ah, lie down. True, like um, the on top actually. Hmm? And in context does mean lie down. I think in this case, like I, I can remember the context. I think this is the one about um, Lazarus 
And it's like, uh, it, if he's lying down, then then he will wake up. But but he's not lying down. He's dead. Mm. He's dead. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, if he's sleeping, then he'll wake up, or he will rise. Yeah. Mm. If he's sleeping, he'll wake up. If he's dead, well, you know, not likely, but maybe just this once. And so the rule then basically is that uh, SJ if, if comes with the second perfect or with the second past. Is that right? Mm. If it is a past tense, I mean, second, not first. You know, that I'm not sure about. I would have to look at other examples. It, I don't think necessarily so. No, I can't think of SJ. I mean, the thing that SJ seems to come with most of all is like the, um, like the Aishan or, or Afshan, that the, the um, conditional verb form. Mm -hmm. uh, you often see SJ and then the conditional verb form with it. Um, I don't know if it's true that it most often comes with the second um, oh, I'm probably thinking of Bohiric though. Maybe in Sayyidic it does come with the second past. I don't know. I'd have to look to be sure. Does he say? I don't know. Um, I must admit I read this one diagonally. Um, real hmm. conditions. This should definitely be a real condition. No, this is going to be the other thing. This is going to be right. Um, so like the initial particle thing. Mm. I feel like he would have put that in there if he said that it, if like SJ always goes with the second tense. Hmm. That's a good question. Well, let's just cheat. I mean, maybe it's just to emphasize if it is that he is sleeping and not something else. So sort of like it is the case kind of kind of uh, nuance. I, I think, it? yeah. So if if he really does sleep, then mm. he will wake up, uh, which, right. which where the implied contrast is. But if he's dead, right. Um, so it's that's actually is the basic use of the second tense. It makes sense here. Right, so maybe it has nothing to do with the if, but more with the with the idea itself. The contrast yeah, is like to point out. The first two examples I just found by searching are not second. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can basically yeah, so disprove that hypothesis. Perfect. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, it's easier to disprove a hypothesis most times. Isn't that isn't isn't that the way? Um, yeah. So so then my. Um, that means that my instruction there was slightly insufficient because I didn't specifically note the second tense. Uh, if he does sleep, he will rise. Um, yeah, and it is a second tense. Notice no adverbial adjunct. Hmm. <laughs> yes, I noticed. We disproved two hypotheses today. Okay. Um, thank you, Aurelio. Uh, Randy. All right, we'll give it a shot. All right. A shope pe. Shodjne a pehob uevol kenin romepe a ye na vol evol. So a shop is another one of the ips. Yeah. Thing. Should it happen that? And then there's a shodjne from the previous class. I can't remember uh, if I've seen that word. Shodjne is like council. That's it. Yeah, I saw. I remember seeing it in a different dialect when I read last time. Yeah. So, if this council is the the eta here, is that the word or? It is. Yeah, from Greek. Like from Greek. So, if this council or this thing, um, ooh, if all the ooh uh, there is actually the indefinite article, although it looks kind of weird. Uh, it's the ooh that you might see before urome, a man. So this is uh from if this if this council or this thing is from a man. Yeah, is uh, is one is one from Evolhen the men and then pe. So if this council is one from men. Then, a yef navol evol. Uh, 
people. Um, he, um, I'll get to the AA afterward. AA, he or it will, is that vol like vole vol? Is that like unravel or yeah, translate exactly. or something? Unravel. Um, it can also be used to mean like explain something or analyze something, but it, you know there it's uh, there's the the metaphor is, is pretty clear, like to to yeah. take something apart or to, to come unraveled. Yeah. And then and AA is AA. That's it's not the third future, is it? In this case, no. Although it is the form of the first person singular third future prefix. In mm -hmm. this case, it's just a word that means like then. Oh, I remember now. Yeah. I remember in the later chapters in, in Lambden. So the whole thing, uh, if this council or this task um, is from men, is from the men, um, I can't remember what you said AA is, then, then? then it will uh come undone i can't remember the best yeah. way to phrase this no that's fine it will it will come undone it will it will fall apart uh so yeah if this if this council or this matter is one from men it will it will come apart um and i think i think this is jesus talking about his uh his message so he's saying that his, his message is divine and uh, the evidence for that is that it, it hasn't been lost. Um, I think there's a little bit of survivorship bias in that, but you know, mm -hmm. if, if you're a believer, you could take that as, a, as an evidence, I suppose. Um, yeah. Good question, um, Aya, is that, is that Greek or Egyptian? I don't know any Greek, so. It's Egyptian. I think it comes from all those yaw, all those I'm yaw type particles that are just like, so, or whatever. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that that's what it's from. I really? never really thought about it that much. It's just like, it's just a, yeah. Like you could take it out and the sentence wouldn't really lose anything. And so it's kind of like then in, in an English condition, like if I go to the store, then I will have food. Um, you don't really need the word then, but you can put it if you want to. If it's, oh, this E, yeah. I think it's from that or, or things like that. There's a bunch of words that are like, some of them have an H in front, some of them don't. Uh, and they mean like, oh, or so, or, or yeah, they're just kind of rhetorical. Behold. <laughs> I always love the behold. Behold, yeah. Um, so many of those in Middle Egyptian and they're so hard to teach because um, they just don't make sense at first. It's like, why the hell would you start every sentence with behold? Um, well, it was, it was olden times, so you gotta, you gotta get people's attention somehow. So I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's related, but, uh, I, in the discord, I brought up that book that Alan, uh, uh, published or that Alan came out with last year, the one about ancient Egyptian chronology, mm -hmm. there's a chapter in it about the pyramid text, you know, old Egyptian. And he noted a lot of words that have to do with like, that are just like the two, like the double, um, the double read leaf so it's like stuff that means like behold or so or stuff that you just begin a passage with that are hard to translate yeah it's just like e or ya or something yeah it's it's one of those kind of things it's pretty yeah, fixed in Coptic. Yeah. <laughs> is that where that comes that? From? is that where the english yay i say unto you <laughs> what is that yay i don't even know oh it's like yeah it's like yes yeah. Indeed, I say to you, we should bring that back. I feel like we don't have enough behold. Um, They're really conversation. Yay, I, behold, we are out of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Do not behold. Do not behold don't that. behold that one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> alas, alas. <laughs> I may... Forsooth, our <laughs> supplies are ended. Oh, good. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, whose turn is it? I don't even know. I'm just going to start over and, and pick y'all. 
at random, any meeny miny Christian. Okay. Um, all right. Ist ihr, okay, ist ihr arret, arreten uh, namen mene? Yeah, it's a bad one. It's, it should this I kind of want the space to go here. Ne et me. Ne et me. Oh, okay. So I'm guessing is it men re? Is that like witness or um that's metre. This is uh love. Oh, okay. It gets an N in it in Bohiric for some reason. Oh in, in some some forms in Sayyidic too. But it's the Mary, that word Mary. Um iste are tenamende ne et me moten. So if I, I'm not sure what to do with the are. Um so is it second um second future okay. uh second person plural. Okay, yeah. So if y'all will love these ne is that the ne, the ne or those yep but then it's ne et me so this would be those, net me in those which sorry. are those which are honest or true or uh this is also love those which are, those which are love no <laughs> those which are those, those those who love those who love emoto oh yeah. so if, if you guys um will love those who love you um, Ashpe Peten Hamot, what is y'all's Hamot? Um, your grace, grace. Oh, okay. Oh, so is that like, well, you guys aren't that graceful if you guys just love those who love you? Yeah, mm, okay, or well, gracious. Yeah, what, what, what is your graciousness for, for if you only love those who love you? Mm -hmm. Turn the other cheek. Okay, any questions about this one? This was kind of a tough sentence. And like, why na menre ne? Is it pre nominal menre and then the absolute form is me? I don't know, but I guess I, I, I know those words both mean love, but I don't actually know what's distinct about them grammatically. Actually, in the glossary, he has me and then menre as the pre, uh, pre nominal. Okay. Yeah, cool. There you go. Okay, that works. Oh, pretty nominal with the okay ne. But quick question about that ne, because I I thought I remembered hearing that like like Boharic actually distinguishes between like these and those, whereas I'm not sure if uh, Zahidic does that. Whereas Zahidic well, would just see net and mal. It could be it could be net and mal. It's also like so Boharic more frequently uses an extra whole paradigm of demonstratives. So there's like ne and ni. Um, and I think they all, it's like, if you take, if you take the demonstratives like pai tai nai and pei te ne, uh, Bohairic also has a different pei te ne, like a whole paradigm. And I think that's connected with the the knee article that you've seen occasionally, but it's it's really common in Bohairic and you don't really see it in, in other dialects. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like, it's a different demonstrative um, with a slight difference in nuance that you can't really translate, but it's, when it's the article, it's like the aforementioned, um, it's like those, but a slightly nearer those than the more far away those, yeah. Okay. It's only recently that I even sat down and like wrote them all out and like found a pattern in them. Um, I think I posted it somewhere. Oh yeah, you had this huge thing on Reddit somewhere in a comment where you had tables and stuff, I think. Yeah, I broke it all down. Uh, I, I don't think that one was even complete though. That was like a step along the way. And then I forgot it. I should just write that up because that's like, it, it might already be in a book too though. I need to look at, um, there's a few, really good like Bohairic grammars and things that might just say what all the different forms are. Um, I have to look though. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing. Okay, do we wanna do five more? We have I'm time? Down. All right, let's do it. 
Um, Rasmus. Um, I can give it a try. I'm okay. Do or do not, Rasmus. The, the second word here is very tempting, <laughs> but I'll give it a shot. Oh, yeah. It's like, that's, that's a real bear. I'll tell you, this is the verb. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, eshop aretena erpetenanef ene eterpetenanef nemoten ashpe peten hmot. Yeah. So, um, that is uh, if, uh, if, uh, and then there's a second person plural, mm -hmm. and the now is the future, and yep. M is to do. So yep. if only, if you do, um, pit, uh, oh yeah, okay, so uh, this is a relative sentence, and nanef is the, uh, what was it called, the attributive adjective, something like that. Yeah, the uh, not the not adjectives, the adjective verb. Yeah, uh, so it is. Uh, it means good in some things, right? So, yeah. uh, that which is good, perhaps. Yep. Yeah. Um, and uh, to to those or what? Mm -hmm. uh, which er do. Uh, that which is good. Nemoten. Uh, okay, I'm I'm confused about the M. Is that a Bahari thing? Yeah, so it's Nem, which is like with. It's men in Saidic. Yeah, okay, so uh, that which is good with you, for you. Yep. And Ashpe is the same. Then what is your gift? Yeah. 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 That's the word was really, uh, it was much easier than it looked. <laughs> it mirrors the before. Once you start breaking them apart, yeah, it mirrors the one before, and then once you start breaking them down, you get these, I mean, you get this kind of like alphabet soup thing going on here, but once you start analyzing it. How, how many morphemes are in that? Ara is one, is and ten is another, and then na, and then Three, ar. Four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight. eight. Mm. Well, I think this. I think this even puts the Germans to shame. Honestly, yeah, yeah, this is really something. This, this is a, a good uh, argument for. I, I've seen some people who I sort of argue whether uh, Coptic could be called polysynthetic, and at yeah. least the, the, this one word would be a good argument to, for that case. Oh, definitely. Yeah, mm. I think it I could. No, <laughs> and it's also it has one. It has one real stress here. Yeah. Aretina er petnanef. Petnanef. Oh, wait, is it here? No, it's here. Petnanef. Aretina er petnanef. Woo! Um, this, is, this is et with theta because of the, uh, the, the Blemnar rule. So this is a uh, sonorant uh, consonant before a stressed vowel. So it becomes et with theta, not with t. So yeah, that everything about it makes sense. It's just kind of a... It's just a lot when you first see it, uh, but you did good. So um, now I will choose Aurelio. Okay. Woch et absine evol hapiom intelt Galilea avnau e Simon ne Andreas son Simon euhishne in city epiom. All right. As he was passing along the Sea of Galilea. He saw Simon with Andreas, the brother of Simon, as they were Hishne throwing out the nets and Siti Epiom uh, throwing them into the sea. I guess the yeah, and the, hmm? the Shne and Siti is like a a a, a cast a compound net almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think those go together. So casting nets. Got it. As they were casting their nets into the sea. As they were casting their casting nets into the sea. Mm -hmm. The word oh. throw is in there twice somehow. So it's hishne is like that, and then they're shne and siti. So they're nets that are meant to be thrown as opposed to like drag nets or, <laughs> you know, or a clap trap or, or whatever. Um, okay. Different kind of nets that people use. Okay, so yeah. when he was, uh, what is this? I think that's a second past again. For it Bohiric. is, except in Bohiric, this is also the form that the temporal, the equivalent of the interref, in Saidic, this is a form that takes in Bahia. Yeah, okay. 
Okay, so as they're passing along the Volha out under, but you know, next to the Sea of Galilee. So Simon with Andreas's brother, with Andreas, the brother of Simon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And this, what's this verb? Uh, to throw. Oh, you mean like um, form wise? Yeah. Um, Eugina, what's the word? Um, circumstantial. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then he comes from, it's Hiwi, I think, in the, the absolute form is Hiwi, but it loses its second radical. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It just becomes he in, in a pre nominal like this. Yeah. Okay. I don't think there's anything else we could say about that. Good translation. And then um, for eight, we have Brandy. And I'll tell you all for the last two, I'm going to flip a coin. So it will be fair. All right. I just happened to get Sahidic twice. <laughs> Oh, that's lucky. How about that? Nai eu shansaku wawa di jo mpa cosmos na ship in jome an etunasaku. Oh, that's the end. Uh, so these things, uh, if yep. the eu shan. These things, if they are them, I can't really tell what that is supposed to be. Sa is from Sai or Sai in this. Wait, no, it's it's Saidic. Sorry, Sai. It's the uh, pre-nominal form. Oh, so high like to write. Yeah. So pre-pronominal form. So Sahu is write them. So these things. If they write them, uh, mm -hmm. wow, like wow. one by one or individually yep. or something. Yep. Um, if they write them one by one, I say to the world, it's um, it, it's I say, and there's no J here, so it's a little confusing. I say, um, the cosmos na shep and jot me an. Oh, so it's a quote after the after the mm. yeah so i say the world will uh receive the books will not receive the books yep. which uh which they will write them yeah and i think it's probably uh the world will not hold or fit the world will not fit the books like these things, should they write them one by one? I say the world will not hold the books which they write. Hmm. So there's like, I think he's saying there's so many things. Like if you write all these things one by one, the world isn't big enough to contain all the books that they write. Hmm. Got it. It's like if you like, if you print out Wikipedia, it will like stack to the moon or something like that. It's <laughs> one of those kind of statements. I see. Yeah. It's kind of a kind of a tough set. We're getting some tough ones, but we are at the end of the book. So, okay, let's see who we get. Wait, which side is heads? Damn it. I don't know which side is heads on this coin. It doesn't have a head on it. What the hell? Why not? <laughs> I only have Euro coins and none of them have faces on them. Mm. All right, well, I have to do that differently. I'm gonna say number or oak leaf. Ah, it's a German coin. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a two penny, a, a tuppence. It's a tuppence. Okay. Um, Aurelio, you won the toss, sure. so you'll get number nine. All right. Another alphabet soup. Hm petreu katoigoride katoigori de emof evol hitotu en en archiereus. Men de presbyteros imperf worship in lao. Okay, the last yeah. part is easy. Imperf worship in lao. He didn't say anything. Yep. Okay. Then this one is glossed. Katoi uh, gori or katoi gore accuse. Yeah. Okay. Mm, and hum was in the lecture. Hum petreo uh, as they were as they were accusing. Him, mm -hmm. him off. 
he tore to. I don't know what to do with that one. As they were so, accusing him from them. Um, you can make this passive as he was being oh, accused. As, as he was being accused by them. Okay. Yeah, as he was being accused by them, namely. The uh, high priests, there are several of them, and the, what are the Presbyterians? The elders. And the elders? Yeah, the elders. He didn't say a thing. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't answer uh, anything. Right, he didn't answer anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm nitpicking Wolshev a little bit. No, no, it's fine. Wolshev specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Okay. So yeah, in in his being accused by them, namely the the archpriests and the elders, he didn't answer them. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Any questions and about that one? Just a remark that was in 12.6 plus normalized causative infinitive. So yep. that is concomitance. Nice work. Nice word. Concomitance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a word that Jim really likes, actually. Ah. He, he uses it in all of his Egyptian classes, concomitance. Because we have so many things in Egyptian that like you don't have in European languages. They they're just like, this thing is kind of happening with the other thing. You know, like the circumstantial, it's so hard to explain what that means because it's like. It kind of doesn't mean much of anything. It's just like this thing goes along with this other thing in some way. And it's like, it's the responsibility of the listener to figure out how they go together, uh, but it's usually pretty clear. So, it's, you know, not really a big deal. Okay. Um, all right, we're gonna flip the tuppence again. I never get to say that word. All right, Randy, not Saidic this time. Oh, nice. Uh, that's with Kimik. So, option. Tef Harau Je ne house Kulepe. I assume uh, Skulepe is lost down there. Yeah, let's just look at what that means. Be troubled. Okay, yeah. Not not a word that's familiar to me. So that very beginning, that hop. Hop is uh is that the example of uh the perfect that remains in some of the dialects? Yes, that's it. So let's see, find, I think shen hetep is like, uh, like, I can't remember what it means, but it's like to find art. It's an idiom for something like to, or to seek, to pity seek his, to pity. Yeah, it's, um, it's, I think it's from shone to be sick plus hate, mm. heart. Got it. So, Fenchurch. What? So, what is your malfunction? Why? <laughs> Can y'all hear her just meowing her head off in the background? I can't just hear right now. <laughs> okay. All right. I won't worry about it then. So he pitied them that the they were troubled. I feel like I'm just guessing here. I'm not really actually. Yeah. Getting, so. So he pitied them because, oh yeah, okay, je ne how. Um, so this is the imperfect converter plus the perfect. So it's pluperfect. So he pitied them that they had been troubled. Yeah. They had been troubled. So in the past of the past, they had been troubled. And in the past, he pitied them because they had been troubled. Hmm. Or he has pitied, sorry, he has pitied them because they had been troubled before. OK, I see what's going on. I see. So the hop is the, the perfect. And then the how is also the perfect. So it's so it, so if like if you were to separate it with hyphens, it would be like a ne hyphen how hyphen skule hyphen pay. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of a complicated one, but I, I think it's I think it's quite fun because it really shows this pluperfect usage of the uh, imperfect converter. Like it really does just kind of kick things one step into the past. Um, this is a good example of that. And we also get the perfect. I don't know how many times we've seen the perfect, but can't be many. Yeah. Okay. Any questions about number 10? I guess we have two minutes left. Are there any questions about anything in this book? Okay. 
No. All right. That's awesome. Well, in that case, we're done. We finished the whole book. Awesome. So, um, someone didn't see us get there today. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, we've been, we really got after it. Um, so I guess this will be the last dialects class, at least for a little while. I think I'm probably going to come up with something else I want to do where we like read in things in different dialects. I've been wanting to do that for so long. Um, in the in the Gnostic reading class, we don't really read things in in other dialects uh, because a long time ago I put it to a vote and it like dialects lost the vote. Um, but we could do something where we read like um, like excerpts from John and like five different dialects or something and, and compare them and discuss them. Um, I think I'll probably start that after the uh, hieroglyphic Egyptian class because I still have a lot to do. Um, that that yeah because I have to kind of make the the activities for that. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll just let y'all know. When I come back to it. I found it really cool that we had this class because while it's not easy, um, at least it makes me shy away, away from dialect less. I mean, normally yeah. if you look at it, it's like, okay, it's Zaidic or it's Bohiric. That's it. Everything else is is weird. They have L's for R's and A's for O's and you don't know what's what, so don't even touch it. Um, and yep. I think Alan does really, and this class does a good job at, uh, well, basically making more, you more ready to engage with it. Even yeah, though we would know every form now. <laughs> That's the goal. And yeah, I certainly wouldn't either. I mean, there are a lot of these dialects where I've literally never read an entire text in that dialect. I just kind of have a rough idea of like, oh, this thing is the equivalent of that thing in the dialect I know. Um, but it's really not that hard. Coptic dialects aren't that distinct from one another. And it's actually, it's kind of one of these like, it's almost like the Fermi paradox um, with regard to like, like why, why aren't there aliens? Although apparently there are or there's UFOs at least, have y'all seen that? Have I talk I've talked about that. It's so crazy to me that like UFOs are real. Aurelio is just like, he's like, please don't talk about UFOs again. Um, I'm so I excited. I might bring up the mangoes, I'm sorry, but. You do not bring up the mangoes. <laughs> I'm so excited about the UFOs though. I think that's so fun. That's like, I'm just delighted. Anyway, um, but it's kind of one of these things where it's like, where are the dialects? Because so we have Coptic dialects, right? But they are, I mean, they're more similar to one another than the, the varieties of English spoken today are. They clearly have not diverged from one another that much. So where are the older dialects? I mean, if this, you know, Egyptian was being spoken in a broad geographical area that wasn't always a, a single united country for thousands of years, you would expect the dialects to be to have diverged a lot more than this. So it actually looks like there was some kind of like normalization that happened and then dialects diverged after that. But then we can see little things like the, um, you know, the etoph and the interef from like Bohiric to Saidic uh, and then different word choice and things like that. But it, I mean, if you compare these dialects side by side, they look like they have been separated from one another for two to 300 years at, at a rough guess, right? I'm not gonna, I didn't measure. Um, and they're supposed to have been separated from one another by 3000 years. So it does pose kind of a mystery about Egyptian, like why are they so similar? Um, but it helps for reading because they are really pretty similar. What makes you wonder whether or not there's dialects out there that just never got written down and those are the weird ones. So sadly, there's no documentation of them, but. I'm sure that's true. Um, although, you know, there like there's the, the Anastasi instance where he says like a man in from the Delta hearing the speech of someone from Elephantine. And we do have Coptic texts. We have things from Elephantine. I'm not sure if we have Coptic texts, but we, we do have plenty of texts and um, Oh, we have the uh, the Aramaic text written in Demotica from Elephantine. So we can see that um, we actually kind of have a relatively homogenous linguistic spectrum at, at everywhere we look. Um, so then you kind of have to wonder, like, was was writing sort of more formalized? Uh, that argument has definitely been made for Fayumic, where a lot of Fayumic um, a lot of texts from the Fayum look just like Saidic, which kind of doesn't make much sense because we have evidence from Fayumic texts proper that are 
um, really distinct. Uh, so there's clearly like some normalization going on. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. I think it's an interesting question. There's so much to be done with Coptic dialects. You were halfway referring a story where an Egyptian text spoke about a person from Elephantine. Did it say mm -hmm. that you have to understand or? Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I don't remember the exact phrase, but it's something like, um, it, like something was incomprehensible like a man from the Delta listening to one from Elephantine. Mm. So it's, it clearly implies that their speech is not mutually intelligible, but based on what we have here, their speech could hardly have been difficult to understand. I mean, it's like one of those things where you have like, you know, um, like I had in one of my math classes, the, the teacher was from China and he had learned English at an ad advanced age and he had a really strong accent. And at first, everyone in the class is like, oh my God, how are we going to do this? And then after two classes, you, you understand his speech perfectly um, and your, your brain just compensates for the difference in pronunciation. I, surely that would have happened with these dialects. They're not very different. Um, so, so then that, that you know, that's from um, a thousand years earlier, but it's like, shouldn't they have been even more mutually intelligible a thousand years earlier? So then the, the figure of speech doesn't really work. It's like they should have yes. been able to understand that. I have an interesting, talking about China, I have an interesting analogous example. Um, so China today, has more than one, well, uh, eight major groups of so-called dialects, which really are languages. They're so different that uh, mm -hmm. you don't have mutual intelligibility. And also um, each of them have dialects and sub-dialects, basically. So it breaks down into a, this whole complicated branch. Now, most of those you can basically trace back to Middle Chinese. Um, I would say maybe going back 1400 years from now. Um, mm -hmm. Min Chinese uh, in a certain area opposite Taiwan, uh, Fujian province, uh, that one seems to have split off earlier. However, um, if you go back another 500 years or so, if you go back to the Eastern Han, okay, that would be 700 years. So now it basically BC minus 200 years BC, you already have a book about dialects. Um, uh, it's basically called dialects in Chinese, Fang Yan. And uh, that already describes for all the different areas how different the speech is. So what I'm missing trying to say is there must have been some sort of re-standardization and successive yeah. waves. So you can also see it in, for example, Shanghainese and Fujian Chinese, basically all those, just like the Southern coast there, they have an older layer of very different Chinese. And then they have basically a Tang dynasty, uh, Tang dynasty, 600, 700 uh, AD kind of layer on top. So what oh, I'm wow. basically trying to say is you may have had similar movements in, in Egypt, where you had a first diversification, um, breaking apart of the language, and then due to political movements, um, migration, uh, switching around officials from the capital and whatnot, you basically make something the standard. It influences the popular speech, and then it breaks apart again. So these things can go in waves. One thing I've learned from the Chinese example is that that tree thinking, like you have one language, and then it breaks up into all these, these uh, branches and sub-branches, that's too simple. There are lots yeah. of like crossovers again. There are wholesale replacements. Um, there's so many things going on over the, the, the millennia. Uh, a tree doesn't do it justice at all. And I think it might be the same thing in Egypt, basically. Yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, it, it, now that we're talking about it, it mirrors perfectly what I described for the writing systems. In my dissertation, I actually said the same thing that you just said, like the tree, uh, the tree model is really insufficient because you have to have constant crossover. That's also true in biological evolution to some extent. You get a lot of lateral gene flow that kind of messes up that tree of life model. Um, and I think that I, I kind of wonder whether the tree I derived for the writing systems might actually be kind of mirrored in the spoken language. Because in the Sayite period, you have like short-term reunification of Egypt and then the proliferation of the demotic script. I wonder if that included with it kind of like a dialect unification as well. I don't know, but it's a good question. In, that, uh, in the uh, Allen book, the, the one that, the phonology book that I brought up earlier, I don't know if it's him, uh, his own uh, conjecture, or if he's basing it off of uh, things other Egyptologists have said, but he, he'd mentioned a few times that old and late Egyptian have either more in common or were based around the same uh, 
origin than a Middle Egyptian was. Yeah. I, now, of course, that's not Coptic. I mean, Coptic would have been, you know, many, you know, hundreds of years later, but. But we can see some of those things in Coptic. The, the prophetic, prophetic Yod or prophetic Alpha that goes on uh, commands. Hmm. So, um, so like Awo in Sa'idic is Wo in Bohiric. It doesn't have that initial Alpha. And hmm. uh, so all of, so from this one dialect, uh, branch or, or whatever, um, you know, this, this thread of continuity, you get all of those prophetic alphas in commands uh, that you don't get in, that you get in Sa'idic and don't get in Bohiric. So there's like a fault line there. Uh, and yeah, you get those I'm, in uh, late, late and old Egyptian, but not in middle Egyptian. Because like on that topic, I'm also thinking about like, where were the administrations? Like as originally, you know, they, they, some of the administrations were in Memphis, and then some were in Thebes, and then some were in Memphis again. I don't, I'm not really good at uh, Egyptian history proper, but, you know, I'm thinking that, like, if the, you know, the establishment of, like, the government, you know, the government is central and, like, the north as opposed to the south, you know, it's, that might have a, an influence on, on the speech. Yeah, and I think it does. I think, um, so I, I, I think Alan would disagree with me, but I believe that the like one uh, one strain is the lower Egyptian one or the Memphite one, and that is probably the Middle Egyptian, where Middle Egyptian fits in, um, and then that's probably where um, like Bohiric Coptic fits into that one too, and then the one uh, like Late Egyptian and Old Egyptian I would guess is the Southern branch. And um, that would be like Saidic, Coptic, and Old and Late Egyptian. And like I said, I'm, I'm pretty sure Alan would disagree. I think he puts it the other way around. But um, in, in either case, our argument would at least lean on the, the location of the capital. Uh, but, you know, in the Old Kingdom, the capital was at Memphis, but it was uh, formed, like the unification came from the south. So right, I think it's right. possible that they brought their uh, historical texts and things that ended up in the pyramid texts from the south, and then Middle Egyptian is is thoroughly um, well. Ichtawi is in really Middle Egypt, but lower Middle Egypt, pretty much just Lower Egypt administration, and then the New Kingdom is you know Theban, so thoroughly, so thoroughly Theban in culture and history. Um, Are there any? of dialect divisions in Middle Egyptian, or are they sort of like perhaps obscured beneath the standardized version of the language? Uh, obscured, certainly. Um, to, yeah, very definitely obscured. Um, and then there's just the fact that the writing system, as far as we know, doesn't record phonology all that closely. So they're obscured both by um, probably the standardization of the writing system and by the way the writing system records sounds both at the same time. So yeah, it's like doubly obscured. So we really don't see much evidence. I know there's some evidence for dialect in late Egyptian, although it's, it's very scant and you have to look really hard for it. It doesn't just leap off the page. Um, Coptic is really the first place where it, it truly does leap off the page. Or really, um, I guess demotic and abnormal hieratic and like that fault line that eventually is erased when you know demotic kind of becomes standard for the whole country. There's about a hundred years in there where uh, Theban Demotic shows lots of influence from abnormal hieratic, which was the script that was uh, dominant for, you know, documentary text there until the Sayite period. So yeah, it's, it's just scant. There's just not that much there. Uh, I think the best thing probably comes from um, using like historical linguistic approaches to reconstruct proto-Coptic. Because you can just take all the dialects and just apply the same thing that you would do to like Indo-European languages and uh, kind of look at the proto-language and see what it looks like and learn a lot from that. Um, and that's a project that I've had in mind for a long time. Um, never really got around to it. But if we do a sort of multi-dialect reading class, um, a lot of our, material would come from that project and then it would probably kind of push it along for me too. I would have to study that material. That's a good idea. I think we'll 
I'll, I'll, I'll have that in mind for the future. We can dig more into dialect and then even talk about like, okay, if this dialect has this and this one has this, what was the, what did the proto language have? And, uh, and then how did it diverge? That'd be fun. That'd be so cool. Yeah, yeah let's do that. Let's do it this fall. I call that remake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's, all, it's all yours, bud. You're calling dibs yours. on that, huh? <laughs> yeah, mine. It's like that Brian right. Regan bit where like the, because he's like the youngest, he always calls like backseat in the middle of feet on the hump. He like just wants to make it look like <laughs> right, he's there right, on right. purpose. Yep, 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 yep. I remember that. <laughs> what is Dante doing? He's posting Peterson after Peterson photo. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's. Let's go engage with that fun stuff, and I will see y'all next week. Have a good one. Okay, thanks yeah. for thanks for coming to my class. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.